Ready? Brilliant. Let's roll. Happy New Year, Trinity. <laughs> Glad to have you all here, whether it's in person or on the live stream or on the recording, whatever it might be. Thank you for joining us this morning on our first worship service of a new year. So, um, not really any announcements today, so John, you want to take it away? The first Noel and uh, bridge that right to what child is this? And our hope was to have more congregation members than uh, performers up here. So we've done it by at least two fold. So thank you for coming this morning. Here we go with the first Noel. Please join us.
Thank you. Let's take a moment for prayer together. God, you come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation that we live in service to you and the natural world. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. You come to us through people whom the world forgets, poor shepherds, and an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day. We ask now, Lord, that you hear the prayers of these people as they offer them to you with their voices and with their hearts. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. And Lord, rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, spoken and unspoken confident in your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Maybe? Yeah. All righty. So I think you guys are going to have this visual, maybe. I'll just read it to you. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you, go. you really are God's gift to mankind. And I saw this, and it made me think of two different things. First of all, I thought about Jesus. And I thought about how we have all this celebration, right, for Christmas. And then we get to this part of the year, and we kind of go back to things the kind of the way they used to be, right? So I was thinking about what a gift he is and how he's a gift to us, right, every day. But then I thought, as we develop that close relationship with him, right? And we talked this morning upstairs about having a goal of reading our Bible, even if it's just one verse, and praying, that as God fills us, what does he call us to do? Katie? Katie? to spread Christ everywhere. So to me, this works in two ways. We are also a gift to mankind. As we allow Christ into our heart, as we allow him to change our mind from our own desires to what God desires for us, we become a gift to others through service, through the words we say, 
through the actions we do. And so it's really common at this time of year for us to have resolutions of how to take care of ourselves. But what I think we also need to add to that, not to say those things aren't good, is what is our resolution for others? What are ways that we can be serving others and helping to spread the light of Christ, not just at Christmas, but throughout the year? Make sense? So that's my challenge. What can we do to serve others? to spread that light of Christ to others. Our lesson today is from the first chapter of St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. In his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. This is the gospel of our Lord. quiz. How many years was it between Cubs World Series wins? Yes, Peter? 108. Why do you know that? (laughs) There you go. You were waiting a long time, right? Not as long as others. (laughs) <laughs> I, uh, I'm a Red Sox fan, so I can appreciate 80-something for Red Sox fans. Thank you. 86. <laughs> it's not 108, but... <laughs> and when each of those teams won the World Series, what did they get? They got a trophy. Right? You can hold up You work hard, you work all those years, you, 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 you ease the pain of all those suffering fans, and you get a trophy, which is kind of a big deal, but then you go, oh, it's a trophy, <laughs> and you put it on a shelf. <laughs> In sports, that's what happens. 
right? You win the big, huge soccer tournament or state swimming or, you know, whatever it might be. You get, a, you get something. You get a medal or you get a trophy or you get something, a plaque, something that you can look at and say, woo I got it. I did it. But that's not just true of sporting events, right? This is the time of year when people find out if they got a raise or not, right, at work. woo that's kind of a trophy you can spend. That's a big deal. This is the time of year when kids get excited and they're constantly looking. Is there anything under there? <laughs> anything under that tree? They wait and they wait and they wait. The reward, the trophy, the plaque, the medal is hopefully some presents. This is the time of year that we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait. And then at midnight, on December 31st, when everyone's cheering, and you see the ball drop in New York City, and everything's so exciting because it's the fresh, brand new start to a new year, and you think to yourself, finally, I can start on my taxes. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) We like to win awards, right? We like to be able to say, whether it's the trophy on the on the uh, shelf or the plaque on the wall or the medal around the neck or the presents under the tree or the rays or whatever it might be, we like to be able to say, I did it. I accomplished this. And I get something to mark that moment. Some of you are old enough to remember how long it took Susan Lucci to win an Emmy. (laughs) How long did you, Pete? No. It was kind of the joke. Susan Lucci was a, a, a soap opera performer, for those of you who, who are. And it became a joke after a while that she hadn't won in so many years. She'd never win. And then she did, and everyone went, yeah, and that was it. <laughs> kind of fizzled out really quickly. Because the waiting actually started to become the more interesting part of the, of the experience. In the lessons that are appointed for today, including this gospel lesson that you heard, God says very, very clearly, it's not you. (laughs) It's not you. You didn't make this happen. I love you and everything, God says, but it, get over yourself. It's not you. You didn't make this happen. Well, what is this? This is this. Everything. God says, look, I was there at the very beginning. The Word made flesh. And I'm going to be here till the very end. And in between that is you. In between that is your life and everything that you do. But you didn't do it. As a result, you don't get the trophy. (gasps) But everybody gets a trophy. (laughs) Not in this case. And if you want a trophy, there it is. Take it. You, you want to you climb up? There it is. Just Jesus. So where does that leave us? Well, that's actually a really, really wonderful place to be. 
Because we don't have to be in the place where we think, have I done enough? Am I good enough? Yeah, that, you know, that kind of works if you're trying to win some uh, kind of event. You know, if you, are you fast enough? Are you strong enough? Sure. That, but that's not what God talks about when we talk about faith. When we talk about faith, God says really, really clearly, I chose you. And all you have to do is follow. All you have to do is trust. All you have to do is believe. Just, just come along with me. You just have to be the best you. You just have to be the you that I created you to be within the boundaries of the very beginning and the very end. That's a lot of room to work. We also do this as churches, not just individual believers. We do this as churches, right? We say, well, pastors do this, so don't ever go to a pastor's meeting. Not that you would have, but now you're warned, <laughs> okay? Because very often pastors will ask this question of each other, and I've shared this with you before, but I've got to share it again because it's so frightening and troubling. How many do you worship? One, Jesus. But what they mean is, how many people are in church? And then, of course, you have to say, video or in person? <laughs> Because, of course, church is a contest, right? Because you want to win. You want to be the biggest church, the best church, the church with the most people, so that God gives you the trophy. As best pastor in town. <laughs> and it's crazy. Because it's God's church. God chose the church. God chose and chooses what's going to happen to the church. Now, I hear and have heard for years a lot of hand-wringing. Why are there so many empty pews? Why isn't the Sunday school have 100 kids like it used to? How come people can get here from Hampton but not down the street? We have two families from Hampton here. Thank you, snowplow, whoever plowed from East Moline to Hampton. <laughs> right? We, we, we have all the, why can't people make it? Why? Uh, uh. And God says, let it alone. Just let it alone. It's my church. I'll handle it. Pastor, you're lucky to get one. I'll handle it. And again, that's the grace of chosenness. That's the grace of... Of God saying, I made this, I choose you, don't worry about it. Because then we have room to move, to be disciples in the midst of all of that. And that is a joyous message. So instead of looking at the empty spaces, we look at the people who are here and watching. Because God says, I brought them here to hear something good. And they're thinking, well, maybe next week. <laughs> Too often we look at lack. And 
And every time God calls us back and says, no, look at my abundance. Look at what I've given you. Look at the people I've given you. Look at the gifts I've given them. Because I choose to, God says. I choose to. And no matter how long you have to wait for it, because that's the hard part for us, because we want the trophy right now. No matter how long we have to wait, even if it's 108 years or a short time like 86, (laughs) no matter how long we have to wait, whether it's for Christmas or New Year's or whatever it might be, we know that we do not wait outside of God's grace. We wait inside. And sometimes we'll be disappointed, and sometimes we'll be frustrated, and sometimes it won't turn out the way that we want it to turn out. But we're never, uh, Art, close your ears, I'm going to say a terrible English thing. We're never not chosen. We're never not chosen. In God's grace, we're never not loved. Because God has chosen to say so. From the beginning of time till the end. So I don't know what's going to happen in your life. And frankly, neither do you. I don't know what's going to happen to me, to you, to any of us tomorrow. If you know, tell somebody. But none of us know. Except we know that because of the cross, because of God's promise, because we are chosen, no matter what happens, it's going to turn out okay. It'll turn out okay. In the meantime, we remember the words of the prophet Sally Field, <laughs> who some of you don't know. She's an actress. She's Forrest Gump's mom, <laughs> among other things. Depending on how old you are, she's the flying nun. <laughs> When Sally Field finally won her trophy, her Oscar, she said, you like me. You really like me. Your trophy today is Jesus saying with full authority and truth, I like you. I really like you. Amen.
do want to point out that four of the five band members today are teachers. But you don't have to be a teacher to be in the band. Uh, what's that? Well, you do have to be, yes. <laughs> but, but Paul and Gail and Nancy uh, are not teachers. Anybody is welcome to be in the band. And in fact, as you'll notice today, uh, over the past couple of weeks and months, the band has kind of been sharing time. So it is not an every week commitment, because I know that's hard for some folks. So if you'd like to be in the band, sing, play an instrument, whatever it might be, I think you'd welcome people, wouldn't you? I know you would. All right. Thank you. And the other thing is that during communion, my cue sheet says, Instrumentals with John and Karen, which I think is a show on PBS, right? <laughs> Excellent. Right before Austin City Limits. <laughs> Let's uh, take a moment to uh, offer our confession to God as we prepare for communion. Almighty God, you have surprised us with your presence in unexpected ways. In the expectations of our routine, we have missed the treasure that you have placed before us. We come to worship you in communion, often expecting nothing more than the usual. We begin our days, our weeks, assuming all will run as it always has. We do not look for the unexpected, for your active presence in our daily lives, and for that we confess our sorrow. Forgive us for not allowing our eyes to catch the unexpected, to glimpse your glory in the ordinary. May this season we see the presence of your Son by the power of your Spirit in new and transformative ways. Amen. In the whole universe, which now with this new telescope, we're going to see a lot more of. In the whole universe, billions of years and billions of miles, God chose to send Jesus to us, chose us and chose you for this meal. Don't take that lightly. It's a big universe. It's a big expanse of time. But you have been chosen to share this meal. And that is a big deal. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Now let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. And we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All are welcome in this meal as it's prepared.
believe we have a song together. Warned at the end of the whole uh, verse, we're going to do an extended measure in there. So just listen to us, and you'll come right back in. I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. So here we go with Go Tell It on the Mountain. One, two, three. being here in person or uh, on the live stream or the recording. Very, very glad that you've been with us this morning and hope that it was a, a good and meaningful experience for you. Um, we will see you hopefully next week. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus the Word made flesh Amen. Grow in God, care in Christ, serve in the Spirit. Thanks be to God.